Defensora de Derechos Humanos. In a press conference in Bogotá, the names were announced of the third victims delegation taking part in peace negotiations between the Colombian government and Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia. The announcement of the third group comes after a flurry of threats and intimidation against both participants in the first two delegations and public figures in support of the talks. As things advance positively, these sectors in the opposition appear, and these threats increase. But I am certain that the Colombian authorities and Colombian society will end up overcoming these small groups of opposition. Si la sociedad colombiana van a terminar imponiendo frente a estos pequeños grupos en contra. The threats also drew words of caution from the UN's coordinator in Colombia, Fabrizio Hoxhield, over what yet may come. Those who somehow benefit from the war uh, because of uh, their illicit economic activities um, and the threat that an extension of the rule of law across the whole of Colombia poses to them, there's a threat that such people will step up their attacks and do whatever they can to jeopardize uh, that put the peace process in jeopardy. It will now fall to the Colombian government to guarantee the security of those past and current participants in the negotiations. On top of these recent threats, the inclusion within this third group of Aida Aveja, the leader of the Patriotic Union Party that was subject to a political genocide at the hands of paramilitaries during the 1980s and 1990s, serves as a striking reminder of the need to effectively deal with these illegal armed groups in order to establish a lasting peace. Charles Parkinson, Telesur in Bogota, Colombia.